Hey Santa Fe, I'm Eli. As things continue to spiral out of control in Santa Fe and we all watch in horror, I wanted to take a few minutes to explain to the community, at least anyone who will listen to me, what's happening in our town and who's responsible for it. By the time you're done with this series of videos, you'll have a very good understanding of who's responsible for these attacks and vandalisms to our city, what their philosophy is and what they're thinking. You'll know the names of some of the organizers and also have a good understanding of some of the organizations that are behind this. I'm also going to expose some of the underlying connections that exist between these individuals and organizations and our mayor and some of the city council members. I'm going to detail their future targets and plans and how they want to accomplish these plans because their plans for Santa Fe are not good. They don't even want to call us Santa Fe anymore. Anything that has a root into our beautiful history anything from a name of a street to the name of our town to places that we that we enjoy like cross of the martyrs any historical place like that they want to erase all of this and i will prove it to you so cutting this up into parts so that it's a little bit easier to watch certain segments and and uh, still keep up on what's happening in santa fe so guys, thanks for checking out this video. If you haven't seen my last video, I know it's a little long, it's about 50 minutes long. If you haven't seen it or if you haven't finished watching the whole thing, I'm putting a link in the description below. Thanks. So I hate to say I told you so, but Santa Fe, I told you so. There have been some statements um, from some people involved that, that basically were super well intended and said that they hope that this decision will bring peace to our city moving forward um, and that we can all get along now. It's not. It's not going to. I promise you it's not. They're going to come back to this fiesta, mark my words, with probably more protesters because they're, they're invigorated from this win. I'll tell you what it's caused. It's caused the thing that they thought was going to go away. It's caused division. A lot of Santa Feans think that, well, if we just give in in this area and let's remove a festival or let's go ahead and just remove this statue or that statue, that it will somehow appease the people who are bringing these protests against us. And it is not going to do that. After the attack on the obelisk, I think a lot of regular folks are thinking things like, can we all just get along now? Can this all be over yet? If we just accept that the monument is going away, can we just get back to normal now? And the answer is, not by a long shot, my friends, no. The people and organizations who are upsetting our city are not going to stop. They've been saying this for years now, and I will yet again show you. They are a hammer in search of a nail, and we, my friends, are their nail, and they want to continue to pound down on us. If we love our city, we need to educate ourselves and lock arms together, all skin colors and backgrounds, native Santa Feans, people who have moved here recently, people who have been here for generations, Native Americans, all of us. If we don't, if we're passive, we stand to lose the precious heart of our historical city. And like they say, you don't know what you've got until it's gone. You know, one thing that I've noticed about good teachers is that they all seem to have a knack for making complicated things simple and understandable. Through these videos, through these parts, I'm going to attempt to be your teacher, Santa Fe. You need to understand what's going on here if we're going to face this challenge together as a united community. I'm going to try to make simple sense out of an incredibly complex situation. Part 1 the hand we have been dealt. So here we go. I'm going to use a couple teaching aid devices to help with everything we're gonna talk about. The first is playing cards. The second is some sketches. We're going to use these to represent all the different players here. And by the end of the series, we will put all these cards and all these sketches together and everything will become clear to you. So when you see various social media posts or articles in the newspaper, or if you bump to protesters downtown, you'll already have a clear understanding of exactly what the heck is going on around here. There are a lot of players here. A lot of cards that we find ourselves moving in and moving all around us. 
Let's take a look at and examine these cards one at a time, and then we'll pull everything together after we've had at least a basic understanding of all the cards in this game. Card number one, the city of Santa Fe. Santa Fe is the oldest capital city in the continental United States. It predates the birth of the United States by well over a hundred years. It's rich in history, rich in culture, rich in things and places all around us that reflect this. Some very old, some more recent, historic places and things. From the names of our schools and streets and shopping areas, even the name of our city itself has deep roots connecting us to the past in a way we often take for granted but still benefit from. One of the oldest, if not the oldest, house in the United States is here. Some of the oldest churches as well. The historic steps toward peace that were achieved here centuries ago helped model for the country how extremely different peoples can get along and mutually benefit each other. This city has deep historical secrets that I dare not mention here, not wanting to accidentally inspire new hatred. Santa Fe is the offspring of primarily two cultures with a complicated past, as any sibling relationship or marriage can be complicated and often filled with both good and bad. Santa Fe is my home, and if you're watching this video, likely yours also if not directly, a surrounding area, in which case I include you as well when I say Santa Fe is your home too. Española, Taos, Tezuque, Powake, Nambe, El Dorado, etc. I'm thinking about all of you as well as extensions of our shared community. For many of us, this was also our parents' home and their parents before them, on and on. Santa Fe has seen the world change drastically over and over through the centuries. It has welcomed and absorbed many others from different places and cultures and religions and has somehow, by God's goodwill, managed to hold on to our culture and roots through it all. Some of these roots have nuggets of gold infused by the way of lessons and values that were learned at great cost and taught many other places how to love people that are different than you, how to respect even when it's hard, and how to build a multi-culture that can last. Santa Fe has recently become the target of what I call generally the woke culture or trends found in extreme progressivism or leftism that has decided that the city's past, its history, is devoid of anything good and only bad and horrible exists there. They think that our past is built only on oppressors crushing others. They then use this extremely incorrect and errored view of history to justify tearing down any and all remnants of our past by any means, politically, forcefully, and even criminally. So in our hand of cards, the first is the city of Santa Fe itself. If you are interested in more detail about the founding and history of the city of Santa Fe, check out my video on this channel called What's Happening to Santa Fe, where I spend the first 15 minutes or so going over a synopsis of the history of the city. Card number two, the Pueblos and Tribes. There are 23 Native American tribes and 19 pueblos in New Mexico. Approximately 15 of these pueblos are roughly within a 60 mile radius of Santa Fe. Native Americans were here long before the Spanish ever came to and settled in this area. Native Americans have a rich and beautiful culture. In my opinion, some of the art that Native Americans produce on a regular basis is unparalleled in all the world. Native Americans have done an excellent job of valuing their past and keeping their culture alive and thriving. This is partially due to dedicated feast days, celebrations, and ceremonies that are closed to the public. The Pueblos internally govern themselves. Some of my best friends through life have been Native Americans. In fact, my great-great-grandmother was named Red, who was the sister of the famous Sioux Indian chief Red Cloud. The Native American people have generally had it pretty rough through much of the past, but the majority of the hardships they have suffered, in my opinion, are the results of the United States government. 
the first thing that comes to mind is what is remembered as the Trail of Tears, such a dark spot on the history of the United States. There are few, if any, promises the United States has ever made over the years and actually kept with the Native American people. Even today, it seems like crimes of murder, rape, etc. against Native Americans somehow seems to find a back seat in the legal system. But these past injustices tend to get lopped on the Spanish ancestors quite unfairly and by proxy on the history of Santa Fe. The strange thing is, in my experience, the people who make the mistake of blaming the Spanish ancestors for everything that the Native American people have suffered are usually not Native American. They're usually younger or middle-aged white people who just don't know what the heck they're talking about. Most conversations with this demographic fall apart in 30 seconds or less if you know even basic New Mexico history. The relationship between the Native American and Spanish cultures has evolved through the years, and again, in my opinion, both people groups remain brothers and sisters to a large degree. The overwhelming majority of people who have lived in this area for more than five minutes are made up of DNA from both Native American and Spanish, including me. So with that said, the opinion of Native American leadership when it comes to the attacks on Santa Fe and Spanish culture is generally very important. I can tell you that many Native Americans have spoken up about the vandalism on the obelisk and the attacks on the Spanish culture as well. Here's a statement put out by the leadership of the Tesuque Pueblo, one of our close neighbors. And I'm not going to read the whole statement. It's pretty easy to find online. I'm just going to read some parts of it. Second paragraph. We were deeply saddened to see the headline and photo, Activists Topple Obelisk. We, the Pueblo of Tesuque Tribal Council, have other concerns with those organizations and or individuals who seem to voice concerns of the Pueblo without consent of respective tribal leadership, the Pueblo of Tesuque in particular. A little further down, through this understanding, the Pueblo of Tesuque unequivocally does not support certain actions, nor is the Pueblo of Tesuque affiliated with any current associations of individuals advocating for the removal of certain statues and monuments dedicated to historical individuals who were factually cruel and oppressive to indigenous and certain minority groups in New Mexico. Furthermore, the subversive actions and activities of those individuals slash organizations have negatively affected all the Pueblo communities and tribes and is of concern with all the Pueblo council governors as well. Then at the end, in closing, we want to say that if any Pueblo of Tesuque tribal members were involved, made or make public oral and or written statements, they voice and or express their opinions as individuals and do not speak for or on behalf of the Pueblo of Tesuque. My understanding is that some of the other Pueblos are either considering or working on similar statements. More Native American leadership voices are likely to be known as the protests likely start up again in the summer and fall. Here's a Facebook post from a local Native American that I thought was very interesting and insightful. Many people are upset about what I have to say about what happened downtown a few days ago, and all I keep hearing is, you should be happy. If you're Native, we took down that obelisk for your people. This was once your people's land. You people who took down that obelisk took it down for your own pride and ignorance. You want to help my people? Go to the Pueblos in New Mexico. Volunteer to take food to the elderly. Volunteer to help build new houses and schools. Donate school supplies and books for the kids. And land belongs to no one. Sure, we may live on it and build on it and use it to grow crops and all, but this land, this earth is all borrowed. One day, it's all going to be taken away. History happened. We may not like what happened, but we cannot change it. All we can do is learn from it and grow stronger from it. No matter what that obelisk stood for, it was a part of history, a part of my dad's history, a part of many New Mexicans' history. You didn't like it. Don't look at it. You hate the people who stand up for their history. Don't engage with them. 
I am a full-blood Indian. I see my people stand up stronger, love stronger, because our history, not because we go out and destroy property, not because we see others act foolish and childish. No, we are stronger because we chose to be better and continue to show love to others. That's a pretty strong statement, and I think this person's got it right. I am not saying that these opinions represent all Native Americans, but I am saying that there is quite a diversity of thought among Native Americans, and this flies directly in the face of the narrative that the protesters who continue to come to Santa Fe would tell us. These protesters and the organizations promoting these protests have presented themselves as the face and the opinion of all Native American people generally, and that is a lie. Take away observations about the city of Santa Fe, the Native American Pueblos, and their relationship. Number one, the two cultures have historically occupied this space and have had a long-standing relationship over several centuries. Number two, as things have evolved over time, Santa Fe has become a shared space for both cultures, as well as for general outsiders, while Native Americans have enjoyed dedicated pueblos reserved only for them. They regulate those spaces and practices for those spaces without any outside influence as they see best for their own culture. This is a very good thing and gives them a well-deserved advantage in preserving their culture. Number three. Santa Fe, with its heavy Spanish descendant population, has a symbiotic relationship with the local Native American pueblos and tribes, and has for hundreds of years. This continues to this day with countless personal friendships, love affairs, business transactions that include Native American art, casinos, resorts, various restaurants, mechanic shops, stores, gas stations, etc. These two cultures are quite intertwined. Number four, it is possible and probable that there may be some residual issues from the past that could find more resolution, but almost nothing since lasting peace was established that has risen to the degree of mob vandalism or outright attack on one by the other. Number five, the local Native American leadership strongly appears to be largely in agreement with the local Spanish leadership in that the destruction of historical monuments, statues, fiestas, and general activism against the Spanish history and representations of that are a net negative for both cultures. Some statements disavowing radical groups and their actions has been made public from representatives of both cultures. In addition, I have inside information that tells me that during the removal of La Entrada in 2018, which I am on record as opposing, local pueblos made an agreement with leaders in Santa Fe that in exchange for removing that tradition, Native Americans would never oppose or protest anything related to the fiestas again, and any Native American found doing so could literally be kicked out of any pueblo they belonged to the most severe disciplinary action that could be taken. At the time, leadership on both sides could not know the various possible ways protests or offenses could develop, but the heart of the agreement seems to disavow general protests of the Spanish tradition, celebrations, and historical values of the city. That would mean a blanket rejection by all local pueblos of any activist or rogue group demonstrating in Santa Fe claiming to be or speak for Native Americans. I know this because I have personal first-hand accounting of local leaders, including the president at the time of the Caballeros de Vargas, Tomas Baca, the president at the time of the Santa Fe Fiesta Council, Melissa Mascarenas, among others who were part of this agreement. You happen to be president at a very, very difficult time in the group's life. Yes. Um, and, um, and the decision was made, however you want to look at it, either retire or greatly change uh, the long-standing tradition of La Entrada. The agreement that was made, um, do you think that it's fair to uh, walk away from the understanding of that agreement? Um, with the belief that the Native American official leadership does not condone the rioters and the, 
you know, and, and the protesters coming to Santa Fe, would it be fair to say that they do not have the blessing of the Native American leadership? That's correct. Yes, uh, with the meetings that, that I had, and we had many of them, um, with the All Pueblo Council of Governors um, representation, that was what was spoken to us, that they did not condone what was going on, and they would do their very best to make sure that it didn't continue. In the words of Regis Pecos, uh, who was the El Pueblo Council of Governors representative at the time, I'm not sure if he still is, uh, he said, they don't represent us. We represent them. The way that they have uh, portrayed this or tried to portray this, in my opinion, to the public when they're you know, chaining themselves to things in our plaza or up on the stage for days yelling at us about how racist everything is or how mm -hmm. racist we all are, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it, it would seem to me then that they are making themselves uh, an enemy of both cultures. That would be a natural takeaway that I would get from that. Yes. You know, so um, they, they portray themselves to be and to speak for Native Americans. Mm -hmm. And to me, that, um, that would be offensive to Native American leadership because that's oh, an act of, that, that would appear to me to be an act of aggression yes. against Native American leadership, right? Yeah, most definitely. Mm -hmm. You were the um, president of the Fiesta Council back in 2018, correct? Yes. And you were president of the Fiesta Council at a time that was pretty tough because you had some challenges that most presidents of the Fiesta in the past hadn't had. I mean, it was, it, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but it was kind of just like, you know, planning for Santa Fe's best party, right? Right. And so when, when you were around, you had to deal with um, the fact that there had been protesters, uh, you know, coming and protesting our fiestas. It, it was a pretty scary time for us. And um, I did my best to keep it together. And um, fiestas went on. And um, with, you know, I guess you would say as much success as it could have, hmm. be it that there was snipers on the roof of the palace of the governors and uh you know our staging area was a little bit different at that point i was in charge of entertainment that year and it was very difficult um we had to adjust to it we had to um have mariachis play louder because of screams and stuff like that you know so they tried they tried to disrupt and we we did the best that we could in the situation mm -hmm. and that was 2017 correct Correct. And then okay. I ran, I ran in, tw in 2018 for president. I'm the old, I'm the fourth female to ever be president of the Santa Fe Fiesta Council. And I am the second person, I believe, that ever did it two years in a row. Hmm. Usually, at that point, the female was one and done. Because okay. it is hard. It, it's a hard organization to um, be in charge of. And especially yeah. when you're a female. Yeah. 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 I, I can only begin to imagine. Um, so thinking back to 2018, um, my understanding is that, that the decision was to, um, that the decision was to either greatly change or to retire uh, La Entrada. My understanding is, is that the heart of that agreement seems to indicate that they don't approve of uh continuing protests and let alone vandalism in our city. Is that your understanding? Was yes. that your understanding at the time? Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Um, and I, I wouldn't use the word retire the entrada because in the new proclamation that was created, nowhere does it say that the entrada was ret retired. What we did was we made a new proclamation in which, I mean, and it's a beautiful piece of, of written work. And it just says how we're coming together and how we're celebrating fiestas. At no point does it say that we retired the entrada. If I could ask you to expound a little bit on, on the idea that there was an agreement and that, and that Native American leadership was um, not cool with continued protests, let alone vandalism. Yes, they wanted all of that to be stopped. Uh, it was, I was under the understanding 
that each governor through the all all pueblos governor um all pueblos council i guess i should say um they were going to go back to their pueblos and they were going to instruct their pueblos that any type of protesting or any any type of that activity was not going to be allowed and if it did happen there were going to be stern consequences for the people that went down there to do that all right well thank you very much i just uh wanted to get your take on that thank you eli yeah okay well thank you so much melissa i appreciate your time okay it would seem that the spanish leadership and the native american leadership have already spoken as to their intent if what I just said is true, then these vandalisms, protests, and groups bringing them are making themselves an enemy of both cultures, foolishly thinking that they represent one of them. So that's it for part one, guys. Thanks for watching. In part two, we'll go over more cards in the hand that our community has been dealt. Next, we'll take a real close look at the organizations and individuals who are vandalizing our town and leading the charge against and attacking the history, culture, and things of Santa Fe. I'll see you soon.